Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. I'm Lucinda Bassett. I am uh, a best-selling author. I created a program called Attacking Anxiety and Depression, and it's helped over a million people overcome problems with anxiety and depression. I, I've written four books. One of them is From Panic to Power. Very proud of that book. I, I'm amazed at how many people have been helped from that book. And um, and you can watch these Zooms on YouTube if you're bored and you have nothing else to do. Um, and what do I do? I What I do is I really try to give people hope and help. And, and it's my goal to inspire people to live um, a life that's full and, and passionate at any age and to help you see the light of, of whatever dark tunnel you've been going through. And I've been through a lot of dark tunnels and my life has never been easy. <laughs> and yet I'm still here. And I told my fiance a couple of weeks ago, I'm like this little fairy. I flitter around, flitter around. And I've always got something to talk about. And I'm very playful. And I'm, what I don't know, I get on and I learn. I'm so grateful that we have so many great books out there and so many thought leaders out there and so much fabulous access to the internet now to good things. And I, I sometimes just sit and look at YouTube for a couple of hours and watch other speakers and hear what other people are doing. And I get so motivated and excited just to, you know, just to talk to you guys in my coaching to give people hope and direction. And I will tell you, life is pretty amazing. I mean, I'm, you know, 66. And as many of you know, I've been through a lot, loss of my husband, loss of all of my brothers and sisters. Um, and I've been through, you know, a major truck accident, or I got hit walking across the street, and uh, some pretty traumatic stuff that some of you don't even know about. And I'm still here, and I'm thriving, and I'm enjoying life. And I have two beautiful grandchildren. And it's my job to help you guys come up with some real solutions and give you good information. And if I don't know, I'll go out and try to find more information. And tonight, um, I'm going to talk in general terms about something called long COVID. And why am I doing this? I'm doing this because um, this is the most severe respiratory illness that we've maybe possibly ever had. And one of the most infectious. And so there's no surprise that we're seeing long-term symptoms. And I know for a while there, people were kind of poo-pooing long COVID symptoms, but they're real. And a lot of universities, and I'm not going to, I went through and I got a lot of information from some pretty big studies that are going on right now. I'm not going to name the studies, but um, there are a lot of them by major universities. And they're finding out some pretty interesting things. Um, Long COVID can come on anywhere from a month to three months to six months after you've had COVID, and it can be persistent, and it can last for 15 months, two years, and they don't really know right now. But what they do know is that there are people who are experiencing ongoing symptoms, and they can range from dizziness to sleep issues to, you know, one of the biggest one is memory issues and cognitive issues to neurological issues, um, to cardiac issues, blood clotting issues, um, you name it. Uh, if you have, if you're experiencing symptoms and side effects that concern you, you might, and you've had COVID. And by the way, we're only talking about people who were non-hospitalized patient or uh, people. In other words, people who had mild to moderate COVID experiences. I did. And, and so if you were hospitalized, we're not talking about you. But if you had a mild to moderate COVID um, exposure, you actually had COVID, and now you're sitting back going, hmm, uh, I'm having some strange symptoms, and, 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 and I'm going to go through the list of symptoms, but I wonder, and here's what I'm finding, and this is why I decided to talk about it, because believe it or not, people who are my age in their 60s or 50s or 70s, and they're having these symptoms, they're afraid to go to the doctor. Because if you're a doctor or if you're a lawyer or if you're a policeman and you are saying, God, I can't remember if I did that six months ago or a year ago. I went to get in the refrigerator. I can't remember what I was getting in the refrigerator for. I went downstairs and I can't remember what I went down there to get. I can't remember that guy's name. I'm looking right at him right now and I can't remember his name. I Well, then you're, you're like, oh, my God, do I have early dementia? Joe Biden sent today, you guys. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, Joe Biden's 80 years old and I, you know, again, he's doing the best he can. I don't really think we should have had this conversation before. I don't think we should have an 80 year old president. I don't, I don't think that should even be possible. I think we should stop at like maybe 60 because listen, I, I'm 65. I just don't think I, I'm sorry, 66. I forgot how old I was. See how that works. <laughs> At least I didn't say I was 25. Then we'd really be in trouble. <laughs> anyway, um, so I want to talk a little bit about some of the studies. They are, we have some really good studies now. And I think what they're finding is that 85% of the patient, patients that were profiled in some of these studies reported at least four of the following symptoms. So let me give you some of these symptoms that are related and have been related in these studies to um, long COVID. So brain fog is a big one. And that, what is brain fog? It means exactly what we're talking about. You know, you just feel like you're not thinking clearly. Cognitive dysfunction, programming, pro um, processing, um, memory is a big one. So you're just not, you're not thinking as clearly as you used to think. You're not you're not, your memory is a little off. So brain fog is probably number one. Fatigue, emotional and physical fatigue. You could, and it, you could just be just exhausted. You just, feel, I, you know, the, that get up and go, got up and went. <laughs> I mean, I know. And by the way, um, I'll we'll talk about that in a minute. But if you were someone who had a very severe case of COVID, that could be one of the pre-existing um, um, variables for whether or not you end up with long COVID. I had my COVID lasted 12 days and it was pretty significant. So um, brain fog, extreme fatigue. And that was on my symptoms when I had COVID. I was exhausted. I just couldn't, I would get out of bed and think, you know, I think I'll just try to organize my closet. And I, I couldn't do it. I just had to go back and lay down. And sometimes I wonder if I have long COVID because I have brain fog. My memory's a little off, especially when I'm tired. Or I'll just feel like, God, I just need a nap. I need to lay down. I never used to have that. And I, I have that experience now. Another a symptom or side effects of brain fog, extreme fatigue, memory issues, numb, numbness and tingling in your fingers or your extremities. Believe it or not, dizziness, lightheadedness, headaches. Um, blurred vision, which I'm also experiencing, um, um, tinnitus, like ringing in the ears. And this is another one that's not surprising, but yet um, elevated anxiety or depression issues, um, cardiac issues, heart palpitations, shortness of breath. These are just some, but one of one of the main lists of symptoms. So if you're someone who had extreme COVID, and you um, now feel that you're having some of these symptoms, there's something else I want to find here, um, then you could be experiencing long COVID. Another, um, some of the pre-existing stuff that might make you more prone to long COVID is your level of RNA, the viral load that you had when you had COVID. There's no way of knowing that unless you were tested at a clinic. At a clinic. I think if you were, you could go back and check on that. Um, or you someone who had mono when you were a teenager? I was. That could or Epstein Barr syndrome. Did you ever experience that? Um, women tend to have long COVID more than men. If you're over 40, you might be more prone to long COVID. So these are just some of the factors that could determine if you are uh, a candidate for long COVID. They were saying possibly type two diabetes that haven't hasn't been proven yet. But any of these pre-existing existing experiences that you had could make you more prone to experiences with long COVID. So um, the thing that makes it difficult to determine is, and if you have any questions or thoughts, please share them over here. I, hopefully I can see them. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, is that we all have been traumatized. So the world's not safe anymore. Um, so a lot of your exhaustion, depression, and anxiety, and even your headaches, your dizziness, your you know um, feelings of overwhelm, even brain fog, could be brought on by environmental stressors. Like, well, what do you mean? Well, how about maybe you're financially stressed, or 
you know, maybe you ended a relationship or the war in Ukraine, or maybe, you know, anything that you're going through, job change, and just that, that whole COVID, that whole, you know, experience of loneliness and isolation. And, you know, the world is just not the same, you guys. Um, so any of this trauma and, and, and stress that's environmental could cause some of the symptoms of long COVID. So um, if, if you're having these symptoms and they're persistent, the best thing to do, oh, by the way, some of the other symptoms they're seeing is increased heart rate, blood pressure variations, uh, gastrointestinal problems can increase over time. And if you're having any of these symptoms, please don't be afraid. And that's the message tonight to go to your doctor and say, hey, you know, um, I can't remember what the name of that fruit was. I can't re remember what my daughter's best friend's husband's name is. Um, I, I, I went out to the garage to get something and I couldn't remember what I went out to the garage to get. And I'm scared that I've got, you know, dementia or early Alzheimer's or something. No, you, you know, the good news is, here's the good news. There are all these clinics and hospitals, UC, UCLA, for example, that are now doing all this, all this treatment protocol and diagnosing for long COVID. So there's, there's help. There's all kinds of things that you can take and there are things that we can do. And I'm going to talk about that, but um, I, I think it's extremely important that if you're relating to anything I'm talking about tonight, and you're a little scared that you might have long COVID, please get help because there is help. And here's a hypothesis, don't you love that word, that I really like, and I want to say this correctly. Um, the hypothesis could be that long COVID symptoms are the result of damage from the body's inflammatory response to the virus, okay? which activates an inflammatory response in cells in the body, including the brain. And this could affect brain cells, which could cause some of these long COVID symptoms. And I don't, you know, I don't want that to scare you. Yes, please mention that. That's fine. Um, somebody wants to ask about monkeypox, which, you know, by the way, it's very, very difficult to catch. There is treatment for that. And I, I don't think you need to worry about that. And, and you're not the only one. And you look at these pictures and it's like, ah! but actually and my fiance is a doctor and I, I saw that and I was like, oh my God, another thing to worry about. <laughs> so that's us, right? But the truth of the matter is um, you don't have to worry about that. So don't worry about that because that's something that is not that highly contagious. There is treatment for it. It's very unlikely you're going to see that being spread around. What you do need to worry about um, is that there is some truth to the matter that um, that this that, that COVID is coming back and spreading a little bit. And so it is better to be vaccinated. So if you're not vaccinated, you know, and you haven't had a booster, get out and get your booster. Um, there are those that are saying that Omicron's not really responding to the boosters that well, that well, and you can still get it. And that's probably true. I'm not a doctor, but I'm gonna tell you what I've been hearing and reading but you're still way ahead to get, to get the vaccine. Um, so, and you would get, um, you know, you're protected if there are any more variants, if you're gonna be flying and traveling this summer, get vaccinated. It's always better than not being vaccinated. So anyway, I, I think that this hypothesis is very interesting because it explains why they're doing all these studies and why there, there are some pretty good um, information out there saying that, if you did get COVID and you did have COVID, you could have had some um, inflammatory brain cells that could be affecting how you think, your energy levels, your clarity of thinking. It could even affect your body and cause heart palpitations and variations in blood pressure and tingling sensations. So, um, and it could create your, your levels of anxiety and depression to escalate. So, in fact, more than one third of the patients in a recent study of one that I won't mention are claiming that they believe they're experiencing one third of the people in this study. That's 30% of the population of the study um, are experiencing these side effects. So they're real. Um, I have even considered myself uh, getting a workup 
to see if, and then that's the problem. Unless you can get a hold of your, um, your test at a lab, if you had a clinical test when you got COVID at a lab and you can get a hold of that information, it's really pretty hard to diagnose long-term COVID. They can, they can try and diagnose you based on symptoms. And then there are, um, there are different ways that they can treat it. And we're going to talk about some of the things you can do personally to treat it. The good, good news is, like anything else, like SARS and some of these other viruses, over time, the symptoms do dissipate and you get better. It could take six months, could take a year, could take two years. And I don't want that to scare you either because it shouldn't because I'm going through it. I'm sitting here wondering if I have it, but I'm not going, oh my God, what if I have it? I'm living my life. I'm getting on with it. I, I try to laugh. <laughs> like I, I can tell you things that were just so stupid. I, I literally went out to my garage. I went upstairs. I was determined. I went out to the garage and I thought, I stopped and I thought, what did I come out here to get? I was adamant that I was coming out here for something and I cannot remember what it was. And I will be talking to my daughter and I'll say, that restaurant, you know, that restaurant. I'm like, oh my God, what was the name of that restaurant? And I'm 66 years old. I could scare the crap out of myself. But instead I'm going, you know, I, it's probably, I, I honestly think, I honestly think I do have long COVID. I honestly do because, and you said, well, how do I, how do I know? I, I'm, I'm not a doctor, but I play one on you know, TV. <laughs> no, I don't. I never play doctor. It's not a, maybe with my fiance. <laughs> That's another story. Anyway, re reverse the roles a little bit. <laughs> ah, too much information. No, anyway, <clears throat> I would say that if you had a pretty significant case of COVID, based on what I'm reading, you might have had a heavy viral load. I had a really significant case. I was moderately sick. I had had it for 12 days. I was really exhausted. I had upper respiratory infection. I had to be on antibiotics. So if you had a pretty significant case of COVID, if you're over 40, if you ever had mono or any other type of, you know, experience like that, um, if you ever had Epstein-Barr syndrome, but if, you're, if you had a significant case of COVID, if you were exhausted when you had it, if it took a long time for you to come out of it, um, and if you're now, if you're feeling like you're not thinking clearly, you're exhausted all the time, you feel a certain amount of, of depression, um, you might have long-term COVID. And, and you could kind of do this self-diagnosis thing and then go to a clinic in your area who's specializing in long-term COVID and see if there's anything they can do uh, because there are certain treatments. There are, I, I'm not going to tell you what they are because um, I don't want to give you any ideas, but there are medications out there. There are prescription medications out there. Um, there are antibodies. There are different types of things you can take to help get you back on track a little more quickly. And um, some of the things you can do for yourself, and there are a lot of things you can do, but um, is seek help. That's, that's primary. Like if you're saying, glad Lucinda, I'm so glad you're talking about this because I was scared it was just me. I was scared I was losing my mind. I'm exhausted all the time. I'm depressed. I don't have any motivation right now. I don't have my energy. I don't have my positive attitude. I want to sleep. I feel like I need to take a nap. I'm not sleeping well. Maybe you have long COVID, but there is treatment and it is temporary. Tempor I know two years doesn't sound temporary, but hey, if you know you've got it and you can go to a doctor and get some treatment and there are supplements you can take. And maybe next week or the ne next week, if you want me to do this, I could ask my fiance to join us and we could talk about some of the treatments that are out there. Um, I had them on a certain page. I'm just looking to see. I just hate to give you any specifics, but uh, I want to talk about what you can do right now that will help you that you can actually do yourself. One is... And this is, we all know this, but sleep right now, if you think, um, yes, thank you. Okay. Um, uh, so R-E-G-E-R-E-R-O-N is a good treatment. This is a friend of mine who's a doctor. Vitamin D, C, and zinc. Ray, thank you. And Rege Regeneron. Um, so if, you know, if you want to talk to your doctor about these things, you can, because this is a doctor that's giving me these, these answers right now. Anything else you've got to 
up there, Ray, please feel free to add it. Um, but as you know, sleep, unfortunately, is one of those things that it's so important and yet it's so difficult for us to, to sleep, especially when you don't feel good or when you're worried or when you're anxious or when you're my age. Uh, sleep is one of the major problems in the country today, believe it or not. I'm really big on uh, natural z that's melatonin and it's the gummies. I love it. I like the liquid one. It's it's lavender, chamomile, and melatonin. I love it. I swear by it. It works for me. Um, magnesium is also great if you're having sleep issues. Sleep is one of the number one, um, I guess, priorities that regard to taking care of yourself. Cardio exercise. <laughs> I know it's hard. You don't feel good. You don't have any energy. Get up, get out, go for a walk, take your dog for a walk, get on your treadmill 20 minutes a day. It will really make a big difference. Lots of fluids, lots of fluids. Um, Ray's saying vitamin, vitamin, what is that? C, 1,000 units per day. Zinc and vitamin C. Vitamin C, be careful. I would do 500. I know vitamin C is fabulous for you, but can, it can also cause some other side effects. So, you know, but zinc and vitamin C and vitamin D, very good advice. Um, it's good for long COVID. Um, but also drink tons of water, get lots of sleep, exercise, exercise, exercise. I know you're not going to like this one, but no alcohol. I mean, if you really feel like crap, and you're drinking two cups of coffee in the morning, and you're doing, you know, two glasses of wine at night, you're going to feel like crap. So if you try, if you don't believe me, and you think, you know, gee, I think I have long COVID, I just really don't feel good, then try not drinking for, uh, <laughs> I'm screwed, <laughs> I get it. Try not drinking for a week, and see how you feel. Try not drinking for three days. And some of you who don't drink are scratching your heads going, I can't believe anybody can't drink for you know, a week. But it's it's like anything else, you know, it's becomes I think I think alcohol becomes more it's not so much an addiction as it becomes a habit, something you do, you know, if you're bored, um having a glass of wine at dinner when you're out to dinner is a nice thing. But you know, not don't drink for a week and and see if your memory comes back and if your clarity of thinking comes back and if your energy comes back and if you're sleeping better. I mean, listen, I love to have a glass of wine. I love a great margarita, but I'll tell you, if I go two or three days and don't have a glass of wine, God, I'm like, I'm thinking so clearly. I can't even believe it. It's like I'm a different person. Um, so be very aware of that. And then know that it's a price you pay. If you want to have a glass of wine, you may not be thinking necessarily the next morning. Maybe you'll do it on Friday and you won't do it the rest of the week. I don't know. It's your body. It's your life. It's your energy. Um, I believe I had long COVID. I got over it a year ago. I had terrible anxiety and depression following the COVID infection. I'm finally feeling like myself again. Yes, and you probably did. And, you know, I'm a really big believer in, um, and I want to, before I get off that topic of what you can do to make yourself feel better, um, they say eat med a Mediterranean diet um, with legumes and, and beans and oil and lemon and it's so it's healthy. It helps with your memory. It helps with your clarity of thinking. So just think Mediterranean diet. That's a really, really healthy way to eat. And it's really good for your brain. And if you're someone who's eating gummies or smoking weed, uh, you know, be very careful of that because, you know, um, yes, it's very, very healthy. Just Google Mediterranean diet. Um, it's, it's one of the best things you can do for yourself and it's really good for your brain. Um, but weed, listen, hey, listen, you know, I've smoked weed. I, I have friends with weed pens. You take a couple of hits and you go, oh, yeah, everybody's giggling. <laughs> okay, it's not a bad thing, but it will really mess with your head. And I think that's one of the hardest things with this whole um, long COVID is how it affects your thinking. And I don't know about you, but thinking clearly and feeling like you're on top of your game and being able to make decisions and having your memory intact, it's it means a lot to me. It's really important to me. So uh, I think you need to take care of yourself. Um, so, so those are some of the things you can do right now to take care of yourself. And I, I just think it's a, um, it's, it's, I don't want to say red flag. What is it? You know, it's a, it's a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a flare, you know, it's a, it's a, a, a warning or it's not even a warning. It's an alert to you that, you know, this, this, that's what this 
this podcast or this Zoom call is tonight. It's like, if you're sitting there quietly worrying that there's something wrong with you, don't worry. Go to the doctor, see if maybe you have long COVID and then start taking care of yourself um, for so that you feel better. And so some of the other things you can do if you're having a hard time thinking clearly uh, or sleeping is, you know, step back, take your time, keep a notepad with you, slow down, make notes, be patient, make plans, um, try to stay away from bad stress, try to fill your life with good stress. I had a, this conversation with, um, <laughs> with a client of mine, you know, if you're in a job or you're in, in a situation in your life where you're stimulated and it's exciting and it's good stress, that's good. That keeps your mind active. If you're surrounding yourself with people who stress you out or you have a job that's causing you a lot of bad stress, maybe you need to rethink that because that in itself can make you feel like crap. Um, that, that diet is olive oil, nuts, veggies, beans. Um, it will really help to stimulate your brain. And the other thing you need to do during this time is just be mindful. And what do I mean by that? That is, you know, the breath work and the, and the beautiful music. Um, when you're driving, put on Jennifer Braz and radio, uh, put on some French music. Um, you know, when you're at home, write your intentions in the morning. I, I love this day because I coach so many people and one of my clients today, I just love this woman. She's just great. She lost her husband recently. And I, I wrote, helped her write eight intentions and for the week. And then she puts them in her phone and they start out with today. I will. And th that it went from there. And so I encourage you today. I will start out grateful today. I will smile more today. I will move more slowly and be more calm in my life today. I will compliment people around me, you know, Today, I will live my life deliberately and do things in a controlled manner. Today, I will be happy and pleasant to be around. You know? And so write a list of intentions for the day, put them in your phone, get up tomorrow and give yourself those intentions so that you can have a better day tomorrow. So the, the whole purpose of this is not to scare you. The whole purpose of this is to is to make you aware. I, I'm someone that, you know, I want to know what's going on. I want to be informed. And this, this long COVID is real. And I appreciate, Ray, all of your advice. So to go back to his suggestions, um, vitamin zinc and vitamin C and vitamin D, which, um, and Regeneron is something you can talk to your doctor about. And then there are some other things too that if you you know Google it, it's it's all over the internet uh, as to what is helping people move through the long COVID experience a little more quickly. But if you feel like you have long COVID, you may. <laughs> I, as I was saying, I'm one of those people that if you think you do, you probably do. If you think you are, you probably are. If you think you're drinking too much, you probably are. If you think you're a negative person, you probably are. If you think you know. You're someone that other people don't enjoy being around. You may not be, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's not about beating yourself up. It's about listening to your solar plexus and listening to the information, listening to what you know about yourself so that you can grow and be the best version of you so that you can be a better wife and a better mother and a better husband and a better employee and, um, you know, someone that people want to be around. Um, Wow. So my friend Ray, who's a doctor, said he saw over 2,000 COVID patients in the last two years and never got it himself. You're very, very lucky and bless your heart for taking care of people. Yeah. I know who you are, an amazing guy. And um, God bless all of you guys out there in the field and front, on the front lines who are dealing, still dealing with this nightmare COVID experience that we're all dealing with. Yes, Ray gives incredible advice and it's such advice and it's such an honor to have him on this podcast, a Zoom call tonight. So just to remind you, we're going to breathe. And for those of you that would like to uh, stay informed, we've got some wonderful podcasts out there with great information from everything from raising your children. The last one I did two weeks ago, how to raise ha happy, healthy children. Oh my God, I loved it. If you didn't listen to it, you should listen to it. 
I wish I would have done all the things I advise everybody to do. Um, I just found some incredible information about raising kids in 2022. And believe me, it's so much different than when I raised mine. And there's a lot to be learned. But you know what? We're still, I'm still raising mine. Okay. I, I have a 30 year old, 36 year old, and I'm still running around with them, trying to help them, motivate them, keep them on top of things. And, uh, you know, I'm always a mother, right? And so there's so much to learn. And I hope you listen to that podcast. So I hope you'll follow me on my podcast, Let Go with Lucinda. And I hope that you will check in with me in two weeks from now. Are we here two weeks from now? I think so. I'm going to be in New York. I should look at that. What is the date, you guys, two weeks from now? Somebody help me out. Um, June, what is it? June, is it June 7th? Anyway, somebody let me know. I won't be here June 7th. I'm going to be in New York City. Um, But anyway, uh, if it's not that date, it'll be the following date. (laughs) Uh, I do this because I want to be here for you. I want to give you guys hope and help. And if I can get through this and uh, deal with life after 65, you can get through this too. And I always tell my daughter uh, and my son, I'm just so grateful to be here at all. Um, so many people in my life, you know, have died and, and I've lost so many friends. And it seems like every time I turn around, I'm hearing about something happening. And um, I'm so glad to be here and so glad to be with you and so glad to have my family and so glad to have my health. So with that, I'm going to leave you. I hope you'll follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And also we're doing a group for anxiety and depression. You will love it. Um, please call Darla and sign up for this group. I, I guarantee you it'll change your life. Um, it's going to start the end of June and Darla, I, I should have your number in my head by now, which I don't, but uh, anyway, ah, it's, it's late COVID. I'm blaming that for everything these days. That's the good thing you can do. It. It's late COVID. It's late COVID. <laughs> no, no, it's late COVID. I really don't have much. It's late COVID. All right. Uh, call 419-350-7499. And you get a 10 minute call with me for free. And you can see if you're a candidate for our next um, group coaching session. And it was an honor to be here tonight. The world needs your life. Put your life out there. Go give somebody a hug. Let somebody know you love them. Share your life. You need to keep that light going. All right. Peace out.